This podcast is part of the Michigan Sports and Entertainment Podcast Network. Go to michigansportsandentertainment.com for more great podcasts. This is Mike. And Beck. And Nina. And we are Brew Crime. Well, we're back for another episode here. Anyone feeling a little hungry? Starting. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nina brought us treats. Yes. Although our, our treats were uh, a little little out of context for today's uh, theme. Some meat pies. <laughs> yeah. Mm, I can't wait to... What are they called? What are they? Um, burek is the meat one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they're called pitas, and then the meat ones are called burek, and then the cheese ones are called sirnitsa. Perfect. I know, they're just like greasy goodness. Mm-hmm. It's yummy. But this episode is actually on cannibalism. So, <laughs> Good not segue. quite the same. <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> well, wow, I hope it's not the same. Yeah. What but, did uh, you feed us? Let us know if you're hungry after this episode. Mm-hmm. I hope not. <laughs> no? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> We might tell the authorities. I don't know. (laughs) All right. Well, we're going to start today with Beck. Mm -hmm. So give us a hint on what you're going to talk about today. I'll be talking about the Russian cannibal couple. They're the ultimate matryoshka doll. A person in a person. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, It's a, a lovely stroll, a few drinks, and why not a little cannibalism? Why not? What could go wrong? Mm-hmm. Just a little nibble. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I think I killed someone there. Off to a good start. All right. So the beer pairing for this episode is Ninkasi Brewing's Total Domination IPA. They're from Eugene, Oregon. This beer it says that it this deliciously balanced Northwest IPA celebrates our love of hops. A delightful blend of citrus and floral hop notes dominate the senses while a trio of malt add a clean finish. Totally hoppy, totally drinkable. The name says it all. Well, it's pretty, pretty cloudy, orangish color, small white head on it. It's definitely got some uh, hop aroma going on. It is citrusy, a little, maybe a bit tropical. Hints of grain in there. Yeah, there's lots of, a lot of like fruit notes, citrusy. It's a little bit, a little bit like stone fruit. It's not peach, but it's a little bit stone fruit. I'm actually surprised it's not as bitter as I expected. It's been a while since I've had this beer. There definitely is some pine and resin, but... Mm. I've never had this one. It's not massive. Not for me. But it's definitely got quite a bit of um, malt character to it. A little bit of caramel, a little bit of grain. What is it that makes it hoppy? The hops. No. (laughs) Okay. Scratch that. No. No, no, no. I think I know what you mean, though. There's there's ones that... it. It, I think we were talking about this in the last episode where you were saying it's not about how much hops there are, it's about how much bitter it is, and that yeah. leads you to believe that there's more hops, but actually it's the yeah. bitter that you're tasting. There's there's different ways. Um, hops have alpha acids. That's what causes the bitterness. So a high alpha acid hop will have lots of bitterness. A low alpha acid hop will have more, like the fruit flavors and all that, usually. And then if you add the hops right at the start of the boil, it adds bitterness and if you add it right at the end of the brew it adds more like uh, aromas and more of the fruit flavors and all that so if you want the bitterness you put it in early earlier in the boil Mm -hmm. and then near the end you put in all the flavor hops and aroma hops i feel like i would say this is hoppy yeah it's definitely it's just not as big as some of the old Mm -mm. northwest ipas what's the percent on it this is 6.7 percent alcohol and it is actually 81 ibu which should mean that it is a big hot bomb. Now that we've talked about the Total Domination IPA, let's get into it. In September 2017, Russian road repairmen found a cell phone and decided to look through the photos. What they saw sickened them. Photos of a mid-30s guy with various dismembered body parts. The workers handed the phone over to the authorities. Police quickly identified the phone's owner as 35-year-old Dmitry Bakshiv, a.k.a. Devil. I'd be willing to bet that he gave himself that nickname, though. Actual nickname, Cactus, because he's such a prick. (laughs) (laughs) 
The police soon arrested him. Dimitri is reportedly suffering from tuberculosis, which is known to be linked to mental issues such as major depression, anxiety, and psychosis. He also did everything that his wife, 43-year-old Natalia, told him to do, which is why we chose this. Total domination. Thank you. Uh, According to the investigation, Dimitri and Natalia were out the night of September 8th and met waitress Elena Vashrueshva. Yep. Not even close. Yep. Just own it. Sounds good. Yeah. Smith, I think, is how that's pronounced. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the three went out for a walk in an abandoned area and continued to drink. Apparently, Elena was flirting with Dimitri, so Natalia told him to kill her. Dimitri took out a knife that he kept on his person and stabbed Elena twice in the chest. She died on the spot. Who carries a knife every day? Like... Psychos. As I'm holding my knife. Yeah. <laughs> Back right, we're going to get butchered. Yeah. It's not a knife. <laughs> this a is in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's two of us. We Got can it. handle this. Yeah. I'll just trip you and, and then make a run for it. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice friend. Yeah. Uh, anyway. And I even fed you. Oh, good point. <laughs> so I'll probably trip you, throw you to Mike, and then I'll get a cramp and go well, anyway. <laughs> Elena died on the spot. Dimitri went on to dismember Elena and took selfies with the remains. Wow. One of the photos even showed Dimitri with a severed hand to his mouth or possibly in his mouth. It was hard to tell from the picture. Most of the pictures I found online were thankfully blurred out. Oh, that's nice. But feel free to search on your own. But as always, don't search at work and make sure you clear your... Cashing cookies. Yeah, cashing cookies. Yeah. Dimitri also took some of the body parts home as a gift for Natalia. Ooh, so sweet. It's like a bouquet of fingers. Yeah. yeah. Well, what a romantic. Mm. Yeah. yeah. She cooked some of them and refrigerated the rest. Natalia and Dimitri lived in a hostel at the Krasnodar Aviation High Military School. Each of them worked in the kitchen at the base at one point or another. It is suspected that one or both of them made unwitting cannibals out of the military personnel there by Ugh. placing canned human meat into their food. It's oh. disgusting. Not cool. That's fucked. Like, cannibalism itself is disgusting. Yeah. But when when they do it to other people, it's, like it's, whole, it's that, worse somehow. It's like the whole Picton thing when yeah. he fed yeah. the flesh to the piggies and then who knows what we ate. Yeah. Uh, very. I think well, very not me. I didn't pigs, live here then. Yeah. Very little of the pigs went to the public, I think, but he used to serve them. At the, Piggy's Palace. Yeah, yeah. Piggy's, Piggy's Palace, Palace to the bands and stuff. So there's yeah. people eating pigs for sure that had unfortunately yeah. eaten humans. Gross. Yeah, wow. So initially when police began questioning Dimitri, he claimed that Elena's death had nothing to do with him. He said that he was out for a walk in the Aviorodoka area. Mm-hmm found a body in a dumpster, and decided it would be fun to take pictures with the corpse. Oh, oh, wouldn't you always? That's perfectly normal. Yeah. For sure. No. She's not dead. She's just naked. She's just Man, a garbage can. so lifelike. It's fine. It's a mannequin. Eventually, he confessed to killing and eating almost 30 people in the last 18 years. Uh, allegedly, the couple used online dating apps to lure their victims. Investigators believe that the couple used sedatives to knock out their victims and then skinned them alive. Swipe left. Skin them. Skinned them alive. Ooh. Some of the news stations in Russia released a video of the search that the police executed at Dimitri's residence. You can see this online as well. Uh, I only saw stills from the video. I didn't actually want to see the video. Don't. I don't blame you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, not my cup of tea. But you can see it not online. Your burger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only saw stills from the video. Bit of a shithole. There's clothes, garbage, food laying around everywhere. Like, it's disgusting. Oh, so it's an episode of Hoarders. It's, it's not even that People because hoarders. it's not like they're collecting newspapers and they're yeah. all in a pile of, it's just like a fucking shithole well it's there's some definite shitholes out there that end up on those reality shows i think so. yeah they also found wigs on their freezer maybe they're not wigs not maybe wigs. it's when they decapitated them and they just sculpt sculpt them yeah mm-hmm. oh. they look like wigs i did see pictures of them i definitely thought the same thing that you were thinking 
and was like, oh my God, that's horrible. But no, it's like a sign of the lambs. He's going to wear them. Wear the wigs. Be the person. Mm. And there was a lot of photos on their bed, like photos that they had taken and then printed and then they were just laying on the bed who needs rose petals on the bed when you can have photos on the bed yeah so one of the photos is dated december 28th 1999 and shows a decapitated head garnished with oranges like in the <laughs> mouth like how you present a pig no there's so there's i saw the picture it's horrible there's like it's orange slices kind of around the head on mm-hmm. a platter a presentation yeah, yeah. And then uh, there's a half a lemon over the nose. I, I, I don't know why. Is it? I'm confused. Sounds like a clown nose then. It kind of looked like it. Oh, yeah. that's bizarre. And then the eye sockets had been stuffed with olives. Oh. Okay. So I get that citrus fruits help tenderize meat, but ew. And yeah. what, what's with the lemon on the nose? It doesn't matter. It's yeah. all gross. It's all no. It's a no. They also found some of Elena's belongings and numerous cell phones that they presumed belonged to previous victims. All the actual body parts found during the investigation so far belonged to Elena. Uh, However, they did also find a jar of pickled human remains and 19 slices of human skin that remain unidentified. They also found plastic-wrapped body parts in the freezer. As you do. Mm. Unbelievably, they found a how-to video entitled Video Lessons for Cannibals, which gave instructions on how to prepare and cook human flesh. That reminds me of something. Stop! Don't you see what's happening here? They're fattening us up so they can eat us! Oh, come on, Lee. If you don't believe me, then just look at this book that I found. Right. Humans, you have stopped eating. Licking, you big, <laughs> stupid space creature. Nobody, <laughs> but nobody eats the Simpsons. I beg your pardon. Don't play dumb with me. We found your book. Uh, you mean this? <laughs> it's a harmless cookbook. It's just a little dusty. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Wait a minute. Wait, there's still more space dust on here. (sighs) (laughs) I was not expecting that. Like, ooh, The Simpsons. Oh, gross people. That episode first aired 29 years ago. Oh, my God. Can you fucking believe that? Oh, my God. And this was, what, 90 what? What year was this crime? Because, yeah, you said Mm -hmm. one of the last states was 90-something. Well, the the first crime that they have evidence of was ah. 99, but this, they were initially caught in 2017. Yeah. Did that episode predict this? Because oh. the Simpsons have been known <laughs> they, to. Uh, yeah. Like Trump. Predict the future, for sure. Just saying. Anyway, uh, back to the Russians. Um, the case at hand. Yeah, I was going to say that, and I was like, maybe that's too on point. Um <laughs> Too cup- on the nose. Yeah. Oh, oh. it's sour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The couple's neighbors described Natalia as intimidating and unstable. The local grocery store owner said that the two frequently came to his shop for vodka. It's Russia, though, so is that really weird? That is the grocery store. Right? Vodka store. It's like an Italian grocery store owner pointing out a patron who frequently buys wine. Yeah. Who cares? It's like water, right? But he also mentioned that Natalia occasionally shrieked and cried in the aisles. So that's not really that weird, though. No. Just no. me? But what? That's how I grocery shop. <laughs> I cry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Four dollars! Oh, no! I just want cheese. I thought I spent $100 at the store yesterday. Yeah. You go in to buy one thing. Yeah. Right? $60 later. <laughs> then you come home and you forgot the one thing you needed. <laughs> or she did. Oh, my God. <sighs> Why wasn't that on the list? Yeah. The list is at home. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> For a time, Natalia sold homemade meat pies to a local cafe. <laughs> I hope it wasn't the place we got oh our pastries God. from. <laughs> no, this Russia. is... We're good. No, yeah, we're, go- we're golden. 
the large amount of pickled and frozen flesh found in the couple's home has led investigators to become concerned that many other people may have unwittingly consumed human flesh. She fucking sold meat pies. That's weird on its own. Like, this is just an extra... I mean, meat pies are delicious. Yes. Unrelated to this case. I wish you knew but... the lyrics to some Sweeney Todd songs right now. Cause... Yeah. Oh, man, that's a, good... that's a good play. Yes. So, Natalia has said that she, quote... Feels for her husband like a mother. Oh. Yeah, that's kind of gross. That's... No one should ever say that about their partner. That's not... I mean, they're fucking munching on people. <laughs> that part is like, okay, whatever, mom. Like, I don't know. Oh, God. I think that's so much worse. <laughs> she, oh, uh, she has also complained that her cellmates won't stop taunting her about the cannibalism. <laughs> what do they say? Do you have any of the taunts? <laughs> I'd love uh, to know. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I no, I did have some of the it like the article I read did have some of the stuff they said, yeah. but oh. I was like, that's not even clever. Oh darn. Like maybe I, it's just lost in translation. Like I feel like I've told oh, someone yeah, like eat maybe. a dick and like maybe she literally <laughs> <Not> did. literally. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she literally yeah. ate a dick. Like I don't know. I'd love to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's so ridiculous to me that she would be like, Don't make fun of me and it's like don't eat people. Like you brought this on some, upon yourself. Yeah. Really. Yes. I mean, obviously, some people get made of made fun for things that it's like you shouldn't make fun of people for that. Of course. You are what you eat. Don't eat people. It's <laughs> disgusting. She's not a person. She's people. <laughs> yeah. So Dimitri now denies any cannibalism or previous murders. He even denies knowing Natalia in 1999. So he says that they met a decade ago and have not been apart since. He misses her terribly. Cry me a river. Yeah, no shit. If everything they are accused of can be proven, the couple would rank amongst the worst of Russia's serial killers. Wow. I don't... Words. Yeah. I looked for further information because this is, what, now almost two years because it was in 2017. Yeah. But it's like it has that much information and then, like, silence. But I think to Nothing could be about silence, the trial or anything. If the trial is still possibly ongoing, they might not be able to release anything to the public, right? Yeah. yeah. But it, for it to be so much information, including, like, the video of the search being available online, and then nothing. Yeah. It's weird. Or because it's in Russia, maybe they yeah. just got murked, and that's why there's nothing anymore. What justice system? Yeah, yeah. no shit. Mm-hmm. Sure, you were in jail getting mocked. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's so. That's all I could find of them. It was a very abrupt ending to my research. It happens. But yeah, come to a dead end. Uh-huh. Well, that's that's uh, quite the fucking story. Yeah. So the moral of the story is: don't eat at military cafes. <laughs> yes. And don't, don't go buy to Russia. meat pies. Don't yeah, Don't trust Rus- Don't trust Russians. Don't go to Russia. No. It's gross. <laughs> Why the nose? Or the the lemon on the yeah, nose. I don't know. I don't know. I wonder. I just really want to see a picture of it. <laughs> I can find a picture. Googs. Real quick. Like, I, I've heard of, like, you, in meals where you put the pig's head, like, in the center of the table and then. Like, the at rest... work when they get pig roasts. Right. Pig roasts are so great. But that's like an apple. It's an apple in the mouth, I think. Yes. Yeah, it is usually. Yeah. Gross. Mm. I don't understand that either because the apple's not going to impart any flavor to basically any of the pig. That's true. It's probably just to keep the damn mouth open or something. I believe so, yes. Yeah. I've had like, because I've had it before with the apples in the mouth and then you eat the cheeks, like pig cheeks. Oh, cheek. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's good. right. But I mean, you don't yeah, taste... Yeah, and the cheek is really good. Yeah, you don't taste any um, apple, though. Yeah, no, that's true. And they do say that human is like pork, so... Yeah, I'll show you the picture. Worst job of blurring things out there. What is wrong with the top of its head? Did they they took the uh, hair look, off? Yeah, it looks like they skinned the top of the head and then those wigs are definitely the that. Yeah, and there's a little bit of something on the cheek. It looks like they've been doctored up to look like a clown. That is so fucked up. It's icing, maybe. Anyway, I did not include this picture as the pictures um, that will be available because you if you want to see it, you can look for it. Yeah, but I'm not including it. Uh, there's one picture that I did include that you'll be able to see on the website, but it's just uh, it's a picture of the couple together and then one of just Dimitri. And it, it looks like he's rotting. Like he looks like a first stage zombie. Just like that's what he looks like normally. Jeez. Well, maybe it's all the people. Oh, yeah. 
Kind yeah, it's pretty definitely. accurate. First I like a shirt, zombie. though. What is it? It says... Oh, I a piece can't of shit? read it. It's some sort of band mm. t-shirt with a D. Probably some, like, metal band or yeah. something from Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Awesome. Anyway. Cool. So that's them. What the... Fuck? What the actual fuck? Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Cool. All right, let's get on to this next case or story. Um, so I'm going to talk about Jeffrey Dahmer, the people Nomer. <laughs> and let's just say that that's how the cannibalism started. All right. So for the beer pairing for this story, we've got Old Cellar Dweller from Driftwood Brewery out of Victoria, BC. Mm-hmm. This is a barley wine style ale. It's uh, from 2018. It's a nice light 10% alcohol this year. <laughs> In the past, it's been 11.4, and before they changed the beer style a little bit, it used to be above 12, but they said it was below when they got caught. Whoopsie. Oh. Yikes. So this, yeah. Rebels. Yeah. What badasses. Over, over 12% alcohol in BC means you pay a different tax rate, and it's much higher, so they just like to say 11.9, but no one's ever done that. It's a little white lie. Yeah. All right. So this ale shows huge malt body with notes of caramel and toffee. Complimented by an ample hop bitterness to support it. When young, it is a hoppy treat with plenty of citrus and pine. Cellared with a few years, and Cellar Dweller gracefully ages into a rich, round reward for patience. Hinting at flavors of tawny port. Do you want to start the pour this time? <clears throat> sure. I love the bottle. I like that it has a skull on it, because that's one thing that Dahmer kept in his uh, fridge, where you kept this beer. Yeah. Weird. The same fridge. Weird. No, yes. No, um, not really. The the logos are, are the, the labels for Driftwood are all done by I think they're Hired Guns, which is a a design firm uh, on Vancouver Island, and they do amazing artwork. It's absolutely beautiful, and it's amazing because they it's not just like a regular like rectangular label. It's actually like a die cut label with the actual sticker is the shape of the picture. It's like around the skull and the bone that comes out. It's a lot of money to do mm-hmm. stuff like this. It's not just your typical typical label. Mm-hmm. And they have the, a lot of detail. the fancy um, caps too because it was wax. Wax dip, yeah. Yeah. It's my first time having a wax bottle, oh, you know. A wax dip, yeah. So this beer is a sort of a, what color would you say that is? Dark. <laughs> Oh, sorry, color. <laughs> <laughs> it's like kind of a coppery or an ambery. Yeah. Probably an amber. Honey amber. Honey amber. Slightly like tannish head. You definitely can smell the, the hops on there. A little bit of pine and stuff. But you can get a lot of the uh, malts in there. It's kind of that caramelly toffee. Definitely. Yeah, it's just a lot of hops up in front. Actually, the flavor reminds me a little bit of the Total Domination right now. It's got like quite a, quite a bit of a, quite a bit of malts up front. The toffee and caramel and all that kind of stuff. And maybe a little bit of dark fruits, which you'd expect from a barley wine, but usually barley wine's a lot darker than this. Mm-hmm. But then it's it just, less bitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then but then this one just starts to build with the pine and resin, the bitterness. <laughs> he, as I, as Mike I spill just spilled. It. Saving it for later, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. I, Dom, I do Dommer enjoy did this. that too. He saved parts for later. Exactly. I do enjoy <laughs> this beer, but it's really it's not tr- truly a barley wine anymore. It's more of a maybe an American barley wine, but it's probably a triple IPA now. Which I would rather than just call it a triple IPA, but it's a good beer. I like it. Mm-hmm. I could drink it. Nice. Cool. And it's not even a yellow fizzy lager. Mm-hmm. Woohoo! It's not, but it's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there, really? It's getting there. Well, it's, <laughs> it's getting closer to the color that I prefer, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, All right, let's talk about the other cellar dweller then. <laughs> Jeffrey, <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so. I'm really stoked to talk about Dahmer because he's my favorite. I don't know if there's like, you can have a favorite of favorites, but he's my favorite. Um, Okay, so Jeffrey Dahmer was born on May 21st in 1960, and he died on November 28th in 1994. Jeffrey Dahmer was an American serial killer who took the lives of 17 males between 1978 and 1991. Over the course of more than 13 years, Dahmer sought out men, mostly African-American, at gay bars, malls, and bus stops. He lured them home with promises of money or sex and gave them alcohol laced with drugs before strangling them to death. He would then engage in sex acts with the corpse before dismembering them and disposing of them, often keeping their skulls or genitals as souvenirs. He frequently took photos of his victims at various stages of the murder process so he could recollect each act afterwards and relive the experience. Dahmer was captured in 1991 and he was sentenced to 16 life terms. 
That's a nice short term. Yeah. <laughs> it was short lived, though, because, you know, he was murdered in jail, but he deserved it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. So one night with a companion, um, Dahmer rented a hotel room. The two men drank, had sex, and then fell asleep. When Dahmer woke up the next morning, the other man was dead, and Dahmer literally had blood dripping from his mouth. From this point on, he stopped fighting his instincts. He gave up and killed again. What? Yep. He didn't remember his this, this killing. Nom nom. Nom 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 nom. Uh, mind you, they didn't say that he was eating him, just that his mouth was covered in blood, so I'm assuming it's more biting. But... Essentially, from this point on, he stopped fighting his instincts and gave up and started killing again. And I say killing again because his first victim was six years prior to this happening, which was a hitchhiker that he picked up. And he was able to not give in to his um, cravings for other men and all that jazz. And then uh, this happened in a hotel room and he basically just said, fuck it. And things got weird. Yeah, didn't he take off to the military and stuff for a while between? That's correct. His dad had sent him to the military, hoping to like straight him out and all that. But due to his, um, and I'll talk about it a little bit later, okay. aggressive alcoholism, he was basically dishonored from the military. And then... You jump in the gun, Mike. Sorry. Then he lived with his grandma and... Let's get back to this. Poor Nani and Nanny. Uh, from this point, he stopped fighting his instincts and gave up and killed again. And again, it was a homosexual uh, he met in a bar and brought to his grandmother's house. Dahmer kept his victim's skulls as souvenirs after having cleaned all traces. In the subsequent years, Dahmer had several problems with the law. In 1986, he was arrested for indecent conduct after urinating in front of some children. Two years later... You know what's the crazy, I, though? Yeah. Nowadays, you would actually be on the sexual registry for that uh, sexual predator registry. Yep. I wonder about things like that. You know what I mean? Like, I'd, granted, some of the time, I'm sure it's like you should be on the sexual registry. Right. But sometimes I think you're probably just shit-faced and completely unaware yeah. of where you are. And all you know is that you have to pee. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't be that shit-faced, though, I guess. Oh, yeah. But... I mean, we've all been there. You just college have to people are stupid. Yep. So a lot of people are stupid. Yeah. Yep. That's true. This well, is the this second podcast. time today I'm having this conversation. <laughs> Not about peeing, but about well, some people are just stupid. Yeah. Sometimes everyone's stupid. Yep. Two years later, he lured a boy of thirteen. He took him to his apartment in Milwaukee, gave him a drink with a sedative, and sexually molested him. He was then arrested uh, with a second-degree charge for sexual assault and enticing of minors with an immoral intent. At his trial for a child molestation in May 1989, Dahmer argued eloquently in his own defense about how he had this seen the error of his ways and that his arrest marked a turning point in his life. I know I should never do this again, so just please, just this once, let me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's I'm white and I'm male, so... Child predator. Yeah. Well, his defense counsel also argued that he needed treatment, not incarceration. And unfortunately, the judge actually agreed. His judge um, handed down a one-year prison sentence uh, on day release, allowing Dahmer to work at his job during the day and return to prison at night, as well as a five-year probationary sentence. Such a load of bullshit. Yeah, it's fucking garbage. Yep. Um, years later, in an interview with CNN, uh, Lionel Dahmer, which is uh, Dahmer's dad, uh, stated that he wrote a letter to the court that issued the sentence requesting psychological help before his son's parole. However, Dahmer was granted an early, early release <laughs> by the judge <laughs> after serving only 10 months of his sentence. So what do you what do you guys think could have happened or could have this been prevented? Had he been given a proper sentence in actual treatment? I think in the end it would have happened regardless, but there would have been a bigger break between murders. Yeah, I agree with that. I think some uh, people are just fucked up, and that's just mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Yeah, especially since um, it's not like that was the first time. So even if he had have got, let's say, the full sentence for the crime that he was caught for, which was a very different crime than what he was caught for later, but yeah, um, I still think he would have continued. Yeah, it just would have been a bigger gap. Yeah. Yeah, I found that when doing this research, I all the focus was usually with the 17 men that were found and all of that. But I didn't actually realize all this child molestation that had happened. I mean, this kid that he lured, to me, that could be kidnapping. 
obviously the sexual assault and all of that. Um, and Mike, what you had um, kind of mentioned earlier about the Sex Offenders Act too. Immediately when I was looking this up, I'm like, how come he wasn't registered and all that? But that didn't come into play until 1994. Yeah. So it wasn't a thing yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely think a lot of the things that are pointing towards Dahmer's problems that people had noticed was his alcoholism. And I wonder if he had received proper treatment that maybe the impulses could have been controlled earlier. Ne not necessarily saying prevented, but definitely I think he needed help. Well, I think a lot of the alcoholism came from the fact that he was trying to suppress yep. mm -hmm. his urges mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it didn't work. But mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, if you would put him into AA and got him to quit drinking, I think it'd be even worse. But I think you can look at it both ways. Maybe the alcoholism let him calm his mind to just do it like liquid courage. He's been wanting to eat that guy he saw at the bar. He's been wanting to take him home. So you know, let's have some drinks and see if I can do it. Okay. Cause what I, what I was looking into, cause obviously I've listened to lots of true kind podcasts and it just sounds like he started as a teenager heavily drinking cause he already had right. these urges and he was trying to block them somehow. Yep. So I well, don't know. It, it's, it's a cycle, right? Yeah. Right. So yeah, after uh, he was released after the 10 months of only serving such a short uh, amount for the molestation, uh, over the following two years, uh, Dahmer's victim count accelerated, bringing his total from four to 17. He developed, wow. yeah, things got weird really quickly. He developed rituals as he progressed experimenting with chemical means of disposal and often consuming the flesh of his victims. Dahmer also attempted crude lobotomies, drilling into victim skulls while they were still alive, and injected them with muratic acid. He was really careful to select victims of the fringes of society. Didn't want to get caught. The, the can, like as far as his case goes, um, obviously the cannibalism is horrible. Yeah. But the lobotomy part, I think, is what bothered me more about well, him. I, th I, from doing the research, it just sounded that he really wanted a truly compliant uh, companion who was going to give him whatever. And yeah. I think this was his way of trying to turn that person into kind of like a living mummy. I think mm -hmm. he wanted a dead body that didn't decompose. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I mean, is that maybe a way that he was trying to suppress having to kill more people by keeping the last person he killed alive longer? No, I think he probably just had more fun because he'd keep it around, keep his plaything around without it starting to spoil. Yeah. Like well, a zombie that doesn't yeah. rot. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's Tina Belcher. Who's that? <laughs> Who is that? Yeah. What the fuck, you guys? Bob's <laughs> Burgers? No. Oh, I don't know if we can be friends. <laughs> Mike doesn't watch Forensic Files, and yet we're still here. We can be friends if he watch and doesn't watch Bob's Burgers. I guess Burgers. so. I guess so. Okay. <laughs> um, um, how bad was he really? Did he deserve some of the following accolades? American necrophiliac, cannibalistic serial killer, etc. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dahmer's final victim, the one that got away and claimed that the knife Dahmer had threatened him with was in the bedroom. When the officers went in to corroborate the story, they noticed Polaroid photographs of dismembered bodies lying around. Subsequent searches revealed a head in the refrigerator, three more in the freezer, and a catalog of other personal effects. Let's call them personal effects because they're people's and... That's yeah. a lot of links between our yeah. two stories. Absolutely. Um, so he had... Maybe Pres they were watching the same how-to video. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Maybe, maybe. He also had different preserved skulls in different stages of decomposition. And uh, a lot of drawers containing genitalia and an extensive gallery of Polaroid photographs of his victims. And what was crazy is the final victim that got away, he essentially ran out and cops came and finally came inside and investigated and... I just can't believe this is how he finally ended up getting caught. Mm -hmm. It's always something stupid. It's crazy. I mean, this is the second person that got out. One of the victims that he had killed and cannibalized and all that um, was a younger boy from, it's not the Philippines. I don't Yeah, it was a that, South Asian country, I think. Something, yeah. yeah. And uh, he was young, underage. I think he was 14, 15. He ran out onto the street and uh, two women who happened to see this naked boy and he was uh, bleeding from his uh, downstairs. The women actually called the police. Dahmer came back, saw the guy outside and talked to the police that it was a lover's quarrel. And because at that point, the gay community wasn't, you know, what it is now, the cops just didn't deal with it. They just wanted nothing to do with yeah. it. And yeah. they, they let the child that... go back with Dahmer. Oh, fuck. 
Yeah. Like, yeah that, that even even if he was an adult, and, it would piss me off, but yeah. it's a fucking child. Who's yeah. naked and bleeding and battered and complete. I mean, he was very, very drunk, so he was out of it. So I don't think he was articulating properly like what had happened, mm-hmm. but it's completely insane. Yeah. One of the more known things about Dahmer, of course, was the Polaroid photographs, which I've talked about a little bit. In 1996, following Dahmer's death, a group of Milwaukee businessmen raised more than $40,000 to purchase them. The pictures, some of the items that he had used for his victims, including blades, saws, handcuffs, and one of the refrigerators that had stored body parts, and they destroyed everything because they didn't want any of this memorabilia around. Who was selling it? Uh, There was people who had, I guess, looted his house and taken Uh... a bunch of things as artifacts. Yeah, so these businessmen reached out to all of these and bought the stuff and destroyed it. Good for them. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Because mm-hmm. so, there are a lot of sick people that would collect it too. And making crazy, I mean, $400,000 for this. Yeah. I don't know what you do. With, I mean, I don't even know. If you have a, I, how could you even use that fridge? You wouldn't, but I mean, there's, there's all kinds of... It would just be a display item. People like the loot murder the, museum. Yeah. People yeah. loot uh, pyramids in Egypt and buy the stuff on the black market, right? So people will buy anything and just stash it away in their own personal collection if they're rich. Crazy. Yeah. Or a museum. Yeah, I that mean, too. That's where... Indiana Jones. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen Our those. favorite grave robber. What? You haven't seen those? Oh, they're so good. I've seen snippets of it. My roommate really loves it. So when it's on TV and she has it on, I'll watch some. But yeah, no. Wow. One in three are amazing. No, haven't seen them. Um, so I'll segue back to talking about cannibalism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to do a little bit of research on cannibalism. Uh, So anthropologist John Marks, a professor of the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, says that cannibalism is taboo, not in the sense that people don't do it, but rather in a sense that it's done under special circumstances. To quote him, no human societies normatively eat human flesh for dietary purposes. As far as we know, normative human cannibalism is always ritualistic, medical, funerary, etc. It's symbolic, special, meaningful, powerful, and magical. The symbolism is important, Marx added. In distinguishing between human and non-humans, if I'm eating people, it's for good reason, like absorbing the body of my god or my ancestor or my enemies. If you're eating people, you're a degenerate monster like Hannibal Lecter. In other words, our own cannibalism is rational. The cannibalism of others is monstrous. In some societies, especially tribal societies, cannibalism is a cultural norm. Consumption of a person from within the same community is called endocannibalism, Ritual cannibalism of the recent deceased can be part of grieving process or be seen as a way of guiding the souls of death into the bodies of living descendants. They can also feel the belief that eating a person's flesh or internal organs will endow the cannibal with some of the characteristics of the deceased. Many criminals who commit acts of cannibalism are found to suffer from schizophrenia. In some of the most horrific cases, there are elements of sexual cannibalism where people derive sexual satisfaction from fantasizing about and consuming humans. When looking at this research, I kind of wanted to see how I can connect it to Dahmer. And many professionals of the mental health have tried to do that during the trial and after to assess Dahmer's mental status. He has been defined as a necrophile, a sadistic maniac, a psychotic, a borderline psychopath, and a subject affected by Asperger's syndrome. Robert Ressler was an FBI agent turned author, and he categorized Jeffrey as a hedonistic serial killer and a lust murderer, his killings involved sex and the victims often postmortem. He had more than three victims and the characteristics of his actions evidence both elements of organized and non-organized offender. Ressler classified Dahmer as an organized offender, premeditating his actions, convincing victims to follow him to his home, taking advantage of them and disposing of their bodies. He also exhibited patterns of disorganized offenders. He labeled him officially as a mixed offender. The crime for him represented the climax of an elaborate erotic sexual fantasy. The victims were unknown, and between a crime and the next, he had periods of remission that perpetually decreased. He had some type of resistance at the early stages. Six years passed from his first victim to the second. But after this point, he had not had any moral sense block, or it was too weak to inhabit his desires. The victims were therefore lived as inanimate objects or inferior and he did not provide remorse. It is obvious that he had extreme, aberrant sexual behavior. What is more powerful than eating a person's body? By annihilating his victims and disposing of their bodies at his will, he got what he desired. 
He lived between delirium and rationality, being concrete and lucinant at the same time. Then if we look into paraphilic cannibalism, it's used to describe a person who gains sexual pleasure from consuming human flesh. Dahmer admitted of having eaten only the meat of one of his victims. However, in an interview, he clearly admitted he used to eat their flesh as it would be a way to keep them and him because it gave him sexual excitement. He wanted that full domination of a person and what better way to do it than to literally eat you. Damn. So according to some psychologists, Dahmer was suffering from necrofetishism. He was fetish of dead bodies and he kept dead bodies in his homes and he slept with them. In some of these stories I had heard, he slept with the decomposing bodies literally in his bed cuddled with them. Oh, I mean, I'm so bad with smells. I, I would, I'd be throwing up so bad. But I mean, I mean, at that point, really, the, the smell? <laughs> oh, no. <it laughs> you know? Least of your concerns. <laughs> right? Like, whatever. Slimy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's cold. Uh, during Dama's trial, I tried to look at other psychiatrists and what kind of diagnosis that they had provide. Dr. Wallstrom, a psychiatrist who provided a diagnosis during the trial, claimed that Dahmer was a psychotic. A man suffering from long time of mental illness never cured. His fantasies about creating a zombie were clear and evident of these hallucinating beliefs. Another doctor, Dr. Palermo, also testified in court and provided a picture of Dahmer as being a sadistic maniac. He added that the aggressiveness and anger feeling are those who punished him to kill. The sexual desires were only a vehicle for those feelings to be externalized. As Dahmer was considered unable to build any kind of relationship, this frustration grew up and ended as anger and hate. He killed those men because he wanted to destroy the attraction he had for them. He could such destroy the part of himself he hated the most. So this uh, third doctor, Dr. Park Diets, described Dahmer as premeditating with attention to his crimes. He lured his victims during weekends, preparing his sedative powders to add them into his victim's cocktail. He added that Dahmer was always empowering himself with alcohol because otherwise he would not be able to kill. He was a paraphilic, but not a sadist, since he tried avoiding suffering to his victims. Yeah, that makes sense. Technically, yeah. he did cut them up alive, but he always drugged them and got them drunk so that they weren't lucid and awake for it. And mm. I didn't think of that before because to me, when I think of a sadist, I'd be like, well, obviously he's a serial because he's a sadist, but... Maybe he didn't enjoy the pain in others. Yeah. It's an interesting way to look at it. A question I had, I guess, for you guys too, and just to see what you thought about it. Dahmer's mother um, had alleged to taking 27 pills a day while pregnant with Jeffrey. Antidepressants, progesterone, and growth hormones. She clearly suffered with some form of depression, although it could have just been kind of all the same thing that strikes thousands of pregnant women. She also attempted suicide after Jeff was convicted. She was under a huge amount of stress and was targeted, vilified by people who really should have known better. His father said that as a young child, Jeffrey avoided eye contact. He exhibited difficulties in the interaction with other children, and he seemed to be emotionally distant. Jeffrey was lacking social skills. He did not know how to handle relations with others. Despite this evidence, there's difficultly no concrete intervention was ever offered to him, which got me kind of thinking if we feel that his family and friends kind of failed him. I think they did. I mean, I've listened to lots of podcasts on this and during high school, he was basically abandoned in his home. Yep. He was living there alone. I mean, yes, it sounds like his mother had lots of problems and I wish she got help for that. But I mean, you're going to leave this kid that has all these issues alone in a house to his own devices, like no fucking shit. He's going to get into trouble. And that's some of the money that was left for him when he was home alone was he spent on booze. Of course he did. Yeah. Sorry. So he, only child? No. No, he had a brother. Yeah. Okay. And Older. his parents were not there because they were... They ended up separating. But when he was home alone. Yeah. They, they just were at work? He was just abandoned. They left him there. But they... His dad had thought his mom was going was gonna to be there at the time, mm -hmm. but she just straight up abandoned him. Right. Um, how old was he? It was in high school. It was so... High school and a little bit, a year or two, two after high school, something yeah. like that. I don't see... How I don't get that what the problem is. In what sense? This is, this is a very seriously deranged kid that needed a lot of help. And mm -hmm. during in that his time, teenage years, yeah. how was he deranged? He was already mutilating animals mm -hmm. and um, drinking. Uh, yeah, he drinking had trouble heavily. in school. One of the things that people called called him like doing the Dahmer. So mm -hmm. he was like a class county. He, he always acted out. He was drunk while in class, and teachers would see him drunk. He would drink out of um. 
literally like old school, like floss with a brown paper bag during school. Mm -hmm. And how come his parents weren't notified? How come Mm -hmm. the teachers didn't step in and find the parents aren't going to do anything? Why wasn't there some form of intervention? Was it because of the times? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's messed up. I just, yeah, I just wanted that information like here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because otherwise it sounds like we're saying any teenager left home. I don't think many teenagers are... It makes a horrible parent, which I really disagree with. Well, I think... I don't think there's many teenagers that are ready to live on their own. There's a difference between living on your own and being left by yourself. Yeah. Well, they abandoned him. That is a bad parent. What do you mean abandoned, though? She didn't come back for days and days? No, years. It was years. Years. I think it was about two years. He lived there for years by himself. And his dad thought his mom was there the whole time. Yeah. He didn't check on him for years? Nope. No. And they're both assholes. (laughs) Oh, yeah. No, they're totally assholes. And it's funny because Dahmer tried to say... That you can't blame my parents for this. It's not their fault, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. It's mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but it's it's all part and parcel. Yes, you are messed up. Mm-hmm. And maybe if they were around, you'd still be messed up. But at least someone might have been able to help, mm-hmm. possibly, mm-hmm. if I mean, there was parental, you know, parental guidance around. Right. And right. if one of the big things, too, is that he doesn't know how to build relationships with people, well, how is he supposed to do that if he's by himself? Yeah. Right. You know, if fine, you don't you don't have friends, you don't have someone you trust, but personally, like, I will always have my mom there. Mm-hmm. And that's a relationship I'll be able to maintain. Mm-hmm. And he didn't even have that with his family, right? And if anything, people always fall back, at least I have my family, at least I have my brother, my mom, my whatever, sis, whatever the... Something. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Even if it's mm-hmm. friends, but... There's someone he could fall back on. He didn't have that at all. No. And I think that kind of goes into, obviously, his inability to build relationships. It worsened after his adolescence. Um, as a young adult, he did not have any friends. His homosexual encounters never tied him in a relationship. He was not close with his parents. He was alone, essentially, with his fantasies. Schizoid disorder of personalities show a lack of interest in social relationships, a tendency towards a solitary lifestyle, secretiveness, and emotional coldness. This pattern is also similar to autistic children, which is a functioning type of autism in the Asperger's syndrome, of which scholars believe he was suffering from. So he's already mentally, and I don't know if it's to do with when his mom was pregnant with him, with taking all those different types of medication and just how she was. But it can't things, help. It, yeah, it can't help. And you'd think if she's seeing a doctor who is prescribing her this medication, could he not see Dahmer there? Could he not see how it's affecting Jeffrey? I mm-hmm. don't know. Well, I mean, to be fair, at the time they didn't understand about what the mother did. There were mm-hmm. there were so many things that they understand now that mothers can't do, can't take yep. that they didn't get was a problem at the time. That is true. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, but you don't leave your kid alone for years. You're a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. and I think maybe part of them abandoning him as well is because they just didn't know what to do with him. Oh yeah, no, he right? was a problem. So I would like to believe that you know this day and age that people just have better a better moral compass i don't know to not just leave your child like that right there's probably more there's more things out there to help you awareness probably there's more awareness and there's probably more government and other things out there depending on what country you live in yes in canada you can probably deal with a problem child without going bankrupt Mm -hmm. yes in the states you'll probably go bankrupt trying to deal with him but Mm -hmm. still yeah and you know part of Dahmer's big thing was the depression and his alcohol dependence. Dahmer has seemed as depressed individual since his childhood. His brother reported that he never smiled. For someone his age, he had no interest in the typical activities and his emotions were flattened. Dahmer had a long history of abuse of alcohol. He used to drink during classes. He was required to detoxicate from it, but never really succeeded. He was dishonorably discharged from the army for alcohol abuse. Alcohol can be used as self-medication. It helps the individual to lower or avoid painful emotion. Alcohol also helps the individual to increase disinhibition of helping to engage in heinous acts that he could possibly feel unable to commit when sober. According to the defense expert, Waldstrom, Dahmer had tried to drink to murder his victims since he didn't like to kill. Mm -hmm. Some people drink to podcast. To explain why he did what he did isn't a simple task In Dahmer's case, both nature and nurture contribute to development of a personality disorder. He had developed abnormal fantasies while transforming into a paraphilia complex spectrum, including exhibitionist, necrophilia, necrofetishism, and necrophagia. 
Ooh, big yeah. word. <laughs> What's I, the difference between those three? The spelling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll get I'm into that in another episode. <laughs> we'll do a whole episode on necrophilia, I'm sure. And yeah. there is a whole spectrum. Yeah, it's, it's, a spectrum. it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And on necrophilia, of course, um, he wanted that complete control of his victims, choosing mm-hmm. them, killing them, eating them. Some argued that he was trying to avoid suffering to his victims. And for this reason, he used drugs. But he did only because it was easier to kill them and because the excitement he had derived from the control of their bodies rather than in the actual killing itself. He was seriously sick and his sickness progressively devoured his integrity. He lost any moral sense or respect for others' lives. Yeah, I think at some point when you're doing such horrible things to other people, you just become numb to it. I think if you don't have the correct like coping mechanisms and skills to know how to deal with what you're feeling with, Mm -hmm. you go to what makes sense. And if what makes you momentarily feel better is bringing someone home, doing everything he did with them, if that gives you that some sane peace of mind, and I'm using sane in his context, not that it's actually sane, then what are you going to do? You're going to repeat that same action, hoping to get that same same feel, that same... Buzz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buzz, Mm -hmm. right? So... Yeah, and then... Um, I mean, it's no different than hard drug users, right? The first time you use a hard drug, you get this massive buzz off of it. Yeah. Right? And then you're always increasing the dose to try to get it back, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you're that. just... You're chasing that that first that first feeling, that first... Um, so what is it like... I oh, forget. I'm not a drug user. It's something like chasing the dragon or whatever. Yeah, you're chasing yeah. the dragon. Yeah. You're always chasing that original high that you can't get back. Right. And, you know, I don't know everything with Dahmer, but through doing a lot of the research, you know, I, I don't feel any empathy for him. No. But I definitely think that society could have done something to prevent the slaughter of these 17 men. Oh, most likely, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, would they have completely resolved it and abolished it? No. It, it, you know, who knows? Unfortunately, that time, mm-hmm. just like nowadays with sex workers, they're still, still the less dead to so many police officers out there. The gay community back then was the less dead. They just didn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. So they just, you know. "Eh." Well, that's the other thing. There's people in that community who are going missing. But, you know, some, which I think we've talked about, not making it known to the family where they are, where they're going. It's the secret lives they're living. Mm -hmm. Kind of ties into our last episode. Bruce MacArthur was picking off gay men. He was also gay, but he was picking off gay men because it was easy because people just didn't look into it. They didn't. Mm -hmm. The police didn't care enough to really try to find these victims right and because they were hiding their personal lives they people didn't know where they were yeah. last mm-hmm. they didn't say you oh know? i have a date with right especially because a lot of them were middle eastern men they didn't tell their families they had wives mm-hmm. yeah, that didn't know shame, that they were actually gay secrets they were hiding it all mm-hmm. so yeah it's yeah. i mean it's it's hard to believe but it's easy to understand how these men just disappeared and Mm-hmm. That was it. When you were, Nina, when you were asking about how did, um, what their families did, mm-hmm. how did that affect him? That's what I was thinking too, was how how did society's reaction to gay people in general affect how he felt about himself? Oh, he hated and then himself. The, exactly. Yep. So much self-hatred. And it, w- it would have been just like a constant fuel to ev- all his thoughts yeah definitely well that's the thing too it's just that there's no that that self-acceptance that it is okay to like who you like it is exactly do, do as i say like you do you right like mm-hmm. but if he already has a personality disorder possibly schizophrenia mm-hmm. asperger like all mm-hmm. of these things combined and then plus you feel a certain way where at that time and place society's telling you you shouldn't feel that way. Right. Well then what what the hell do you expect someone to do, right? Eventually someone's going to explode, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not everyone naturally is going to start doing what Dahmer did, but I'd love to, you know, one day maybe look into the, like the suicide rate, right? How many of these people just straight up disappeared, left the state, never went back to their families because I'm going to go somewhere I can just be who I am and not be yeah. judged by the people who know me. Well, and like you said, most of his victims were also African-American. Quite a few. Which is another problem, too, because of the inherent racism of the time. Personally, I think poverty plays into it a little bit oh, as well. Oh, hell yeah, it does. Because yeah. one of his big things is, you know, come have a drink at my house. I'll give you some money to take pictures. If you don't have money and someone here is going to give you free booze, and he's a tall white guy who's somewhat okay looking in that you know in that community in that time and place yeah thin blonde 
yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. you know, almost like Nathan and Blonde. Uh, no, just, <laughs> just, just joking. Um, Whatever, you're a delight. But you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Like in that, you have all these things like you don't have a job. You're in a community that doesn't accept you. And here's someone who's like, yeah, come to my house. We'll have some drinks. I'll, I'll pay you to give you. And I think in some of the instances, he also actually showed them he had cash. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, just joking. I don't have money. Mm-hmm. I think there's just so many different circumstances that played a big part of this. And yeah. um, kind of the last thing on talking about Dahmer is um, during his trial, you know, personally, I was really surprised with how he was in the trial because I feel the impression that I got is he was just completely defeated. He didn't want to be in jail. He's like, just, yeah. just, just kill me. Just get it over with. In that kind of sense, you know, we can talk maybe about the death penalty here and there, but to, to each their own, yeah. right? Like I can see it in certain instances. In his case, it's, it is what it is. I, th- I think he should have gotten it, but regardless. He didn't, he wanted to die. So the best punishment for him is to make him live as long as possible in incarceration. Exactly. But you don't agree with the opposite of that sentiment. I never believe in the death penalty. <laughs> No, I, I think someone should have to suffer for their crimes and ending their life doesn't let them suffer for that crime. They should have to rot. If what they fear most is death, it does. But I also think is if we're keeping them alive, everyone else is suffering because our tax dollars are going to keeping this piece of shit alive. But actually in countries where death penalty is a thing, like the United States, mm-hmm. yeah. The uh, prisons are private, which is a whole other discussion. discussion. On our next episode, the the United States prison system is all about profit. Is that what the next word was? Yes, Uh, it's all about profit. So they don't have to fucking care about someone being in that prison. They get paid more for having that loser in prison for their entire life. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the loser I'm talking about didn't get that kind of uh, thing. So when uh, where Dahmer was kept. This other convicted murderer, he committed, he killed one person. I didn't really do too much research into it, but his name is Christopher Scarver. He found out that Dahmer was someone in the public eye and kind of famous. And this Christopher Scarver essentially just wanted to make a name for himself. And he killed Dahmer in prison a couple of years after he was in, incarcerated. So what Christopher Scarver is known for is for killing Dahmer. I'm not going to cry for Dahmer there. No. Not at all. No. But still, I just don't believe in the death penalty. Isn't this the death penalty, though? <laughs> no. No, this because is just another murder. It's, 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 it's not like the government... The government is not murdering someone. I get it. The whole idea is like, yes, just, this person is an awful person. He murdered people. This person who killed him is an awful person. He murdered people. Mm-hmm. But the government is supposed to be better than these pieces of garbage. Mm-hmm. The government shouldn't be murdering people. Mm-hmm. I don't because, actually think this is equivalent to the no. death penalty. No, well, the, the government... Like to... Yeah, get no. you going. But yeah, no, exactly. The government actively being involved with murder mm-hmm. of their own people mm-hmm. is fucked up. Like, mm-hmm. War is just like war is fucked up, anyways, mm-hmm. and his government's murdering people. Mm-hmm. But killing your own mm-hmm. people is just next level, in my opinion. Well, I think the whole system is flawed. The whole world yeah. is fucked. Yeah. <laughs> but I think with this, you know, Christopher guy, you know, the impression I got from Jeffrey Dahmer is that he just needed to do his thing and he wasn't doing it for the notoriety. And I saw some of the serial killers that we talk about then, okay, fine, once they're caught, they're just a floodgate of information. Yeah, I killed yeah. this person, I did that. Yeah, they're just like peacocking And around. making stuff up Absolutely. just to sound better. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to get their name out there. And uh-huh. that's not the impression of what uh, Dahmer had done. So to me, it was kind of bittersweet that this other kid who wanted that notoriety mm-hmm ended up killing Dahmer. There's two people in the cell. Scarver came in and he stole a piece of exercise equipment from the prison and just bludgeoned and killed them. And now Scarver lives on as being known as a person who killed a cannibal. But so. I know Jeffrey Dahmer's name. I don't I've know this I've never heard of his yeah. name. So he is losing there because I don't know his name. You don't know his name. Did you know his name before? Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I guess, yeah, yeah. You know, but... <laughs> I, I, Dahmer's kind of my thing. Um, but... <laughs> yeah. But most people don't know who this guy is. He's just yeah. some fucker that killed Dahmer, right? So, which I think is good because fuck you, like yeah, no, he didn't get his notoriety, which is awesome. But I, I think did, let's forget that it was Dahmer that he killed for a second, just because you kill someone because you want to add to your counter, or whatever. I think you're just scum anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just messed up. No, I do agree too. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, that's kind of everything I had on uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, the people Dahmer. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, it's an interesting story for sure. I've always been fascinated with Dahmer too, so thanks for sharing it. Yeah, I definitely love him. It's weird. <laughs> I don't know. That is weird, yes. I don't know. It gets me going. 
I don't know why. No, not like in that kind of way, but I just think... That's good, because he wasn't interested in you anyways. <laughs> and I mean, you got all those tattoos too, so you won't taste good yeah, anyways. Taste yes, right. <laughs> well, at least my right arm, my left thigh, my back. Okay, let's count. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I've always been fascinated with him. I think it's so much. Of... Maybe that's why you have all the tattoos, just so he won't eat you. <laughs> well, I'm also born the wrong sex, apparently. Yeah, but you can change that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Imagine to go through all that and then someone eats you. Like, yeah. I paid so much for this thing. <laughs> and then you're going to just. Okay, I think I'm good. Poop uh, it out. <laughs> that's what you're going to do. Whip it out? Poop it out. Oh, I thought you said just fucking whip it out. Okay. Uh, on that note, mm-hmm. <laughs> the title for my story is PCP is a hell of a drug. Because <laughs> oh this is, we're not talking about cocaine. You've heard that one, right? Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Yep. So, well, who was that? Um, who was the guy that did that again? Uh, Dave that? Chappelle. Dave Chappelle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do y'all got any more of that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know a fun fact about Dave Chappelle? Yeah. So in high school, they had uh, us around like Valentine's Day fill out surveys. And then whoever in the school would do a survey, they'd match you with someone in school, a celebrity, an opposite, a possible interest, whatever. Every year, my celebrity I got matched with was Dave Chappelle. <laughs> That's awesome. It's meant to be. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Uh, yeah. But my story is going to be on a rapper called Big Lurch. I guess before I get into this here... I actually had every intention of doing a story on um, this metalhead from Finland, Jarno Elg. Back in 1975, he killed and, with a couple other people, ate someone listening to metal. But unfortunately, he's in jail, but they have put a uh, gag order on all the information for 40 years. So we won't know for a long time actually what happened. So I couldn't actually do that case. Why? Why? Mm-hmm. There's I, no idea. There's hmm. a bunch of information, like you know, well not a bunch. There's like two paragraphs of information and nothing. So we know what band he listened to while they ate the body. Blah blah blah. They haven't released the name of the victim. We have all the names of the group he was with that ate him, and so then nothing. Do you, do you figure it's maybe like a satanic ritual that they were trying to get famous? So to get famous, you sacrifice a virgin. I think there's just like a lot of places. <laughs> people... Or does he know someone? Maybe he could be related to someone in high places. But mm-hmm. in general, the black metal scene and stuff in the Nordic countries is always tied in with Satanism, even if they're not satanic. And it could just be like satanic panic bullshit. And once it's locked down, it's locked down, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, my bad. He was born in 75. The murder was in 1998. Ah. My bad. He was born in 75. This okay. is when you're just pulling up stuff to quickly talk about it. You fuck up so, the dates. So on episode 975, we will talk about this guy. <laughs> yes. Stay tuned. So Stay yeah, tuned. Was, they, sorry, his murder was uh, on November 21st, 1998. So we won't know for a very long time actually what happened. So I couldn't do that one. I'll remember. I'll put a <laughs> reminder put in it, my calendar. Put it in the calendar. <laughs> so to uh, tie in with the big lurch here, and uh, my title PCP is a hell of a drug, we've got... Delirium Tremenes, which is from the family brewery Huegi. I don't know how to pronounce that. H-U-Y-G-H-E. It's beer from Belgium. It's 8.7% alcohol. And it's got a bunch of, like, elephants on it. You think Dumbo, where he's always, like, drugged out. It's got some, looks like dancing alligators and maybe some Chinese dragons on it. It's a really cool bottle. It's a really cool <laughs> bottle. And it's, I mean, it is just a glass bottle, but it they've painted it to look like a um, ceramic bottle or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. And it's corked. Oh, <gasps> wee! <laughs> what a I was fun actually ride. Um, on my way here one time, and I had stopped to pick up some beers for our episode, and I uh, was talking to the young fellow that worked there, and this was one of the beers that I had grabbed, and he was really trying to convince me to not get this beer because it was so horrible. What a um, good salesperson. I know. So I got it anyway, because his reasoning was faulty. Yes. Faux show. Was he trying to sell you something else? I was like, well, what do you like? Because I wanted to make sure that uh, we were kind of on the same page. Mm -hmm. And um, his, like, go-to was (laughs) Kokanee. So I I should be introduced to him. (laughs) No. You could be soulmates. No, 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 Nina. 
He didn't look old enough to sell alcohol. <laughs> Perfect. I like but I mean, on. I'm almost a 40, fan. so. <laughs> Did he have nice biceps? He, um. Dahmer liked biceps. He ate them. <laughs> Actually, that was one of his favorite pe- features on a male body. It was mm. biceps. No. He looked like he was, like, in grade 11. What was the legal age of consent again? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> You're 16 then, no? Okay. So, on to Big Lurk. These are jokes. <laughs> anyway, so... color jokes. Blah, blah, blah. This child and I disagreed about what kind of beer would be good, so I bought this beer anyway. But it I makes us like someone it. who looks of that age to only be, you know, know Colt 45 and Kokanee oh, and... Bunch of shit. Old English. Well, mm-hmm. I, used to, I used to drink Colt 45. It used to be so cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, so on to Delirium Tremenas. <laughs> So it's kind of, kind of a golden color, a little white head. It's got kind of a interesting uh, Belgian aroma. Like it's very fruity, but mm-hmm. it's got kind of, without being sweet, it's got kind of that, it's not even a candy sugar, which you often get with Belgian. I like it. It's got, it's it got is like fruity. a, a candy fruity nose. Without being excessively sweet. Mm-hmm. I find it rather sweet. I don't know that. And I really like this light colored beer. Like the flavor is a lot, a lot uh, fruitier, a lot sweeter. Mm-hmm. It's got kind of that sugariness that a lot of Belgian beers get. It's got kind of a bubblegum note, too. I know what you mean. There's something in the aftertaste. It's not double bubble, but it's got kind of a bubblegum mm-hmm. flavor in there. It lingers. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I like about this beer is that, what did I say it was? 8.7% alcohol, but I'm not tasting that alcohol. No. It smuggles that alcohol Are we so drinking well. the same beer? Yes. It's uh, this is... You don't like it. <laughs> it's okay. I'll drink it for you. It is burpy, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, you know what it is? Like, it's like a lemony bubble gum. Mm. That's what I'm getting on it. I really like it. I like the fruity beers. I like the bottle. Yeah, the bottle's beautiful. It's got kind of that champagne bottle going on. But There's something for everyone. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's just this isn't your uh, cup of yellow beer. fizzy lager, that's all. You keep saying that like it's a thing. What, cup yeah. of tea? Cup of cup beer? Of beer. <laughs> you, got your, you got your Estrella over there that you're drinking, right? That's how you say it. <laughs> Yes, you I do. just keep the Estrella. Damn, Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> Anton Singleton was born on September 15th, 1976 in Dallas, Texas. He would grow up over in East Dallas with his family. At seven years old, he would begin to write poetry as many young people do. Yeah, that's what I did. At seven, I wrote, or at eight, wrote poetry. A lot of kids do. I mean, poetry is a big thing for kids. You, yeah, when you're learning about rhyming and stuff, mm-hmm. and you think that being able to rhyme is poetry. Yeah. As he got older, he decided he wanted to start a career as a rap artist and began to perform in the 1990s. As a young rapper, he would go by the name of G Spade. I don't have no idea what this stood for, but can you think of why it would be G Spade? Gangster Spade. I don't know. I don't know. Thousands of Gang- spades. cards. Thank Thousands of little tiny shuffles? Maybe. <laughs> I, don't know. I think of spades, I think of a card, but then why yeah. wouldn't he be a king? Why would you want to be a, a, a leaf? <laughs> Is a spade a leaf? There's more spades than there are kings in a deck. It's similar. Okay, well. All right. He would later be known as Big Lurch. Somehow earning That's that... not better. Yeah. Somehow better earning... than Little Lurch. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Somehow. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what? Somehow Can you imagine ur- like a Lurch mini-me? What's a Lurch? <laughs> From Adam's family. Oh. Let's get into that. So, oh God. somehow earning that name from the character Nubbin Sawyer out of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I could not find one one bit of information of why that was the case. But it was also said he was given this name because he was a six foot seven frame, although very, very slim. So people thought he looked much like Lurch from the Adam's family movie. To further his rap career, he moved to California, where his father was living. His mom stayed back in Texas, although he did spend a lot of time with both his parents. Big Lurch would begin to hang out with the gang members, furthering his gangster rap persona. So on September 19th, 2000, he was driving his car when he was struck by a drunk driver and his neck was broken in this accident. Oh my. This happened only one day after his 24th birthday. Oh, that's horrible. So he spent some time at the hospital dealing with healing from the accident and most likely rehab. And during this time, they would keep him heavily medicated due to the pain that he was experiencing. I mean, no shit, right? You broke your fucking neck. Yeah. 
So it was high on painkillers in the hospital where he would write some of the songs for his album. After his release from hospital, he would suffer from pain from the accident and he would still have trouble walking. No shit, right? Mm -hmm. The rehab from that is a long time coming. My brother-in-law broke his back. So I know I know the issues recovering from these kind of incidents. It was due to this, though, that he began to take PCP or angel dust for the pain. He had used it a couple times as a child, and he knew it would give him the numb feeling. Living in a drug house in Los Angeles with gang member friends, the PCP would flow freely. April 10th, 2002 would change Anton Singleton's life and his good friend and roommate Tanisha Yassif's life. It is said that Big Lurch was on a five-day PCP binge when the murder would take place, according to Nisha's gang member boyfriend. Did you say Singleton? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like that piece of shit that we were talking about in the dismemberment episode? Last name Singleton. Mm. (gasps) It all connects. Don't don't marry a Singleton. (laughs) I guess so. Weird. They had a big party the night before the murder, and the whole gang had been smoking PCP. Tanisha's friend Alyssa Allen came over to visit in the morning and found her body mutilated and dismembered. Her chest had been sliced open with three inch blade and was found broken off in her scapula or the shoulder bone. Oh dear. According to the LA police detective, her internal organs were visible. On top of this, there were teeth marks on her face oh. and on her lungs. Oh. Her lungs had been ripped out of her chest cavity even. He may have even chewed on her intestines, according to a couple of things I read. So he really silenced her, huh? Yeah. Silence of the lungs. <laughs> oh, that is terrible. I love it. That's actually pretty fucking good. Her mother was actually never allowed to see the body because of the state it was in. Well, that's a good. That's just a good idea. Yeah. I think my mother would be like, you're going to tell me what I can and cannot see my daughter. Mm-hmm. Shut the front door. Mm-hmm. Where is she? <laughs> mm-hmm. Probably that exact wording, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. She'd just go full out, I think. So once the police were called, they were on the hunt for Anton Singleton, or Big Lurch. An eyewitness that saw the arrest would say that he was picked up by the police, where he was fully naked, covered in a ton of blood, pulling his own hair out, and standing in the middle of the road with his eyes to the sky. Ew. Remember, he's fucking high as a kite. He was also said to be chewing something that would likely be her flesh. Oh. <laughs> It is also said that when he was questioned by the police, that he was growling like an animal or a dog. He's completely just like out of it. Oh, just, who just who totally knows? Yeah. Fucked, yeah. The contents of his stomach were examined soon after the arrest. To no one's surprise, they would find human flesh in his stomach, and none of that flesh was his own. He it's, could have been, you know, chewing on himself, but no, it, it's all someone else's flesh. It's not better or worse. Neither. It's just. The fact it's yeah, I'm just saying. Well, it's only considered cannibal. Well, one of the things it's more likely considered cannibalism if you're consuming someone else versus your own. That but then go, it's auto cannibalism. Yeah. But then are you going to say that every woman who eats their placenta is doing cannibalism? Technically, yes. Um, it's not legal to eat your own placenta. Yeah. We just leave it to the Scientologists. Well, people still do it though. They can I know make they do. placenta pills because you know it tastes gross. Yeah. Well, maybe you shouldn't be eating your insides. But did yeah. we have this conversation at work? About the placenta ingredient I think, thing? I think so, maybe. Okay. I've talked about it with some people, but mm-hmm. it can kind of go to that too. Like, what yeah. do they expect to find in his tummy? Yeah. Oh my God, what if he had placenta pills in his stomach? Well, like people that eat placenta, he would spend time in a psychiatric ward after his incarceration. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> yep. Mike has basically just said, okay, well, shut up now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Back to my story. Yep. While Singleton was waiting for his murder trial... Tanisha's mother, Caroline Stinson, would file a wrongful death lawsuit against Singleton, Stress Free Records, and Death Row's Back, the reincarnation of Death Row Records. Anyone that knows gangster rap from back in the day, Death Row Records is like Tupac and like all the big guys, right? The lawsuit stated that the label provided Singleton with the PCP to encourage him to act out in an extreme violent manner so as to make him more marketable as a gangster rap artist. Part of what makes a gangster rap artist marketable is the fact that the artist is a participant in violent activities, the lawsuit claimed. Death Row would be dropped from the lawsuit at a later date as it would be determined that the label had no connections to Singleton. I'm sure they did, but some people can just get off on things, right? Pay to make it go away. Yeah. Singleton would plead not guilty to charges 
as the defense would argue that he was in a psychotic state due to the use of PCP the night before the murder took place. I don't understand that. Who who decided to take the PCP? He did. But I think part of it is that, yes, that is true, but it sounds like he was probably being fed PCPs too, and he was also taking PCPs for the pain from his accident. So there's a lot of... A lot of fucked up shit going on here. Like, there's a lot of things that happen. People that have like back surgeries, and I know someone this happened to, they went in for back surgery, it didn't go well, and the doctors put them on opiates mm-hmm. and got fucking hooked to the opiates, mm-hmm. and then it took a long time to get off those opiates and get on something that wasn't addictive, and it's all because of the doctors. So, yes, he wasn't prescribed these. But when people get fucked up in accidents and there's a lot of pain, Mm -hmm. they reach out for something that will dull that pain. And he found PCPs and then got in with a bad group that fed him PCPs. So there is – it does sound like he might not have actively sought out these PCPs. It's like, here, have some. But I think it's also what is his intent, right? Like he's taking the PCP so that he can – ail his back. Maybe then he found, okay, my back feels better, but I like the high. Yeah. But I – would find it hard to believe that someone would be like, I'm going to do this PCP so I can kill my roommate and eat her. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this guy isn't guilty, but... Yeah, and I'm not saying that he took the pill so that he could kill her. No. But he did make that decision. Yeah. They would not dispute the claims, and Singleton would even tell the jurors that he committed the crime during a five-day PCP binge. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like tough titties, so... From Wikipedia... The court ruled that his intoxication and claim insanity were not satisfactory reasons for committing the crime. After a court-appointed psychiatrist who evaluated Singleton reported that he had no reason to believe Singleton was of unsound mind. Now, of course, three other court-appointed doctors would conclude that Singleton was insane while he murdered Tanisha. So, you know, three of one, one of another. The district attorney would make a motion during the court proceedings that the judge order a directed verdict. They would state the drugs cannot be used as a grounds for an insanity plea in California, and the judge would agree with this motion. For those who do not know what a directed verdict is, here is some info on it. A directed verdict is when a judge instructs a jury that they must bring a certain verdict as one of the parties has not proved their case as a matter of law. Seems kind of odd to me. Why have a jury if you're just going to say, you have to do this? Yeah. Yeah about that part like don't get me wrong i agree with the verdict he probably should be in jail Mm -hmm. but you must do this i don't know one thing that was used against him in the courtroom though was lyrics of one of his songs he was a fan of horror movies and true crime such as serial killers he produced a hip-hop in a subgenre called horrorcore so here's a piece of one of his songs you know i just killed this song for yeah that make it dead oh but to say as much as I don't like rap that's actually not terrible <laughs> you don't know a lot of good rap then <laughs> I hate rap so I'm not even sure how this was admissible in court. It's a mm-hmm. fucking song. Yeah. I'm not saying he didn't murder the poor woman, but this song has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. Like, we I, make a true crime podcast. doesn't mean we're criminals. No, but I can say how they're like, well, at that time, how if maybe they're like, well, you talked about this, so maybe you premeditated that you were going to kill someone, yeah. right? Like, that actually, the song wasn't even technically released publicly at that point. <laughs> Makes it even... Weirder. Yeah, weirder. In the end, he was convicted of murder and aggravated mayhem on November 7th, 2003. I hear that the jury only deliberated over lunch in this case. He was sentenced to the life in prison without the possibility of parole, although there had been possibility of the death penalty. Do you remember getting angry at the victim or at her boyfriend? I mean, all I can remember, you know, the world was for the end, and and I had to find the devil and kill the devil before the world ended. That's, That's the last thought. This drug is not a plaything. It's not a beer. It's not a marijuana cigarette. This is something so mind-altering that it will make you a cannibal or a beast. So in 2004, Stress Free Entertainment and Black Market Records released a solo LP on behalf of Singleton or Big Lurch called It's All Bad that featured 
Kilate, Lil KK, Roger Troutman 2, and Too Short. I would have to assume that these were all well-known rappers, although I have no idea. I'm a metalhead. Sadly, I have very little information on the victim of this case, Tanisha Yesis. I do know that this poor young woman was a troubled person who had drug issues, but was an aspiring model. She was mixed up in the gang lifestyle, though, and sadly, if this had not happened, it's likely she would have found a different way to end young. Gang lifestyle is not one you're going to live a long time in. No, but it's, you know, live, live fast, die young. Yeah, and she did. Her mother stated that she was a very lovable person and that PCP is a very bad drug. Amen. This is not a total cut and dry case, though, as according to both Anton Singleton and Tanisha's mother, there may be a conspiracy. Gangbangers got on the stand on me and took the stand on me and, and, and said I did it. But far as her boyfriend, he was a gay member, I believe he the one set all this up. He was beating on her. She had all her stuff packed, ready to leave the day all this happened. They got me high on purpose to take advantage of me. She got hit in the back of the neck with a um, one of the little kids' scooters because a handprint was on the scooter, bloody handprint. But they said they didn't know who that was. But it wasn't his. It's not even no proof that I actually did the murder. My prince wasn't on her weapon. It was a dope house. They didn't find no dope in the dope house, though. She didn't smoke the PCP. It was like somebody pulled it down. You know, the bottle was pulled down her throat because she had so much in her system. They said ain't no way she could have smoked that much. We on Figueroa, we were heavily armed up in there. You know what I mean? We had all kind of guns up in there. But when the police hit the spot, there wasn't no guns up in there. There's evidence there, like footprints, fingerprints on doors, you know, bloody fingerprints. You know, shoe at the back door, you know, and it's like, where all this evidence go? It was DNA, who DNA was. They said DNA came up lost. So we were dealing the gangbangers cleaned the spot out. Did I even do the murder, though? That's the question. Then the police said they caught Big Lurch running down the street butt naked covered with her blood but when they showed it on tv he wasn't covered with blood you know it was just you know like from him gnawing on her lung it was like you know drops of blood like on here and he had a little the tissue on his beard they saying he was high she was high so they made it look like he did all this work to her there's no way he could have done that work because the way she was messed up hatred had to been there and like he said, he didn't hate her. They brought up a song I did called I Did It To You. You know, it's like Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, and Freddy Krueger, Jeffrey Dahmer, Charles Manson, and all of your friends on Ben Studs School, yeah. You know, they brought up that song like it was a blueprint for the murder. And the jury went for it. To me, he didn't have no affair trial. It's like, he did it. We're going to get it. We're going to put all this on him. He done it. It's over. That was it. They convicted me over lunch break. It wasn't no day deliberation. It wasn't an hour. They said lunch break, deliberate. As soon as lunch break was over, guilty, guilty, guilty. So who knows what really happened, but her mother thinks it was a setup. What do you think? I think that was insane, listening to that. I mean, the scooter and the handprints and the blood and covered in blood, but he's not covered in blood. It's very suspicious. Yeah. I mean, obviously her organs ended up in him somehow. Oh, there's no, there's no one saying that he didn't eat her. Like, he admits to that, but it was a drug-fueled thing. Like It sounds like he probably didn't kill her, or there's a good chance he might not have killed her. But I mean, who else would have been in that house? Because anything... Oh, it was, it, was full of a, it was full of the gang members. They right. were all there fucking... So are they egging him on? Up. Oh, Did yeah. someone kill her? And then, because he's already... In this inebriated yeah. state, you gotta like, remember too. Eat her, eat this, because he said something about I saw the devil and I had to take care of something yeah. earlier in the other clip. You gotta remember too, like these, the whole gang, um, gang rap uh, thing. It was all about hanging out with these people that are true gang members, the Bloods and the Crips, and you know, just trying to live on the outskirts and look cool. But so often, people would get dragged in. You know, like Tupac and Biggie both ended up getting murdered. Even though they weren't true, like, it sounds like Tupac got a little more involved. He kind of really started to love the lifestyle. But a lot of these guys would get into the lifestyle. They weren't true gang members. They were just, you know, they, they thought Posers. it was cool. They thought it was, like, you know, powerful being around these gang members. And this it sounds like this guy was very similar. He just, he thought it was cool. He thought the lifestyle was cool and it probably would help his rap career. And it sounds like these guys could have just egged him on and 
it went too far. But I mean, I'm also curious if at that point he was so addicted be, uh, to pain suppressants due to his back injury, you know, was he even thinking of his rap career or more just like, at least I'm in this situation, someone's giving me drugs to deal with the pain. And then a consequence of that is this. Well, it, it sounds like this whole time, like during all this PCP and stuff, he was recording this album that ended up getting released after he was put in jail. So I think like a lot of things, um, a lot of bands that are like Nirvana, Kurt Cobain was always fucked up, right? Um, look at Sublime. The last album that they put out that everyone loves, almost every song on that album, almost every song is a hit. They would find, the, I forget what his name is now, the vocalist in the bathroom ODing all the way through the recording process. Um, so uh, Allison Chains, the former vocalist, ended up dying. Basically, he would have been homeless, but someone in the scene gave him a house to live in. Even though he was still in the music scene, he, he died of an overdose because he was a junkie. And unfortunately, there's a lot of junkies that make music. Mm-hmm. A lot of really good musicians are junkies. The former, uh, or sorry, not former. Whitney um, Houston. <laughs> Whitney Houston, yeah. Uh, Trent Reznor, who is Nine Inch Nails. His best music was when he was a fucking strung out junkie. Unfortunately, unfortunately, like he is sober now and he's still making music. It's just not as good. He, he lost his anger. He lost his angst sobering up. A lot of the best music comes out of musicians that are just fucked up. And that might have been what happened here. Yeah, I don't know. I, even having him talk about it and like release a song and then they just over a lunch break decided his fate. Personally, you know, I'd love to know what else happened inside that courtroom because my question, had I been a juror, obviously it's easy to say now in hindsight, would be, okay, well, where did those prints come from? Well, you said he was covered in blood, but if he was seen and pictured with... What do they say? Flesh on his beard and a couple they, of drops. I've seen some pictures, and there is not a lot of blood on him, really. And mm-hmm. if it was such a rage kill, as there's, you know, as uh, I think her mom had said in that clip, yeah. What are we talking about? Rage kill to me is the way I envision it is very different yeah. than from what it was described. It was picked up, but I can also see how you're like, well, you're butt naked running down the street with flesh it, on your beard. Yeah, yeah it you're guilty. Look good. No, no, don't get me wrong. Like. Even he's not saying he shouldn't be in jail, Mm -hmm. but maybe shouldn't be for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, maybe there's a real killer out there who is now not behind bars, who isn't serving the proper justice. Well, I mean, most gang members are usually guilty of murder and they always end up fucking going free until they fucking die of some gangbanger shooting them up or whatever. I'm sure that half the gang members that were involved with this case are probably dead now. Mm -hmm. It's just what happens with gang members. It's the lifestyle. Yeah. We always love when people leave us reviews on iTunes or wherever you can leave a review. Mm -hmm. So this one here is uh, from the iTunes name was Hef the Pup (laughs) from USA. Cute. So this is um, this person forgot Nina was involved. I think it's because they always hear our promo and stuff on other podcasts. We have to Mm re-record with Nina involved. So Mike and Beck rule. Not only are they funny, but they are informative too. The Valentine's Day Massacre episode had me rolling. Can't believe Capone died of a freaking heart attack. I'm also a big beer guy, so that is a plus. Do yourself a favor and subscribe to their this gem. And this is actually from one of the two people from Going West podcast. Aww. It was from Morgan. So it's awesome. Thanks for leaving us a review. Mm-hmm. Even though you forgot me. No, it's okay. Oh. Well, like I said, we got to change our <laughs> promo that we keep giving out because it's just me and Beck. We have to re- record that today, I think. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. You can find us on Twitter at Brew, Brew Crime. You can find us on Facebook at Brew Crime. You can also find us on our group at Brew Crime. You can also email us if you want to send us an email at brewcrime at pacificbeerchat.com. Uh, you can find us on basically all of the podcast apps. And if you can't find us. Send Let us, us a know. Because yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. we want to be there too. Yeah, and we're keen to interact. So feel free to send us a message on whatever format is your pleasure. Yes. Yes. We will reply. I sure will. <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll reply. Me too. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Bye. Cheers. Brew Crimes intro was created by Mike using Creative Commons Attribution Licensed Audio from purple planet.com, soundbible.com, and freesoundeffects.com. Logo design was by Ben Greenberg. All cases and stories were written by Beck, Nina, and Mike, and our sources are put into the show notes for each episode. 
We always want to give credit to the people that research the cases we talk about. Check out our store at brewcrime.threadless.com where you can purchase swag like t-shirts, phone cases, beach towels, and all kinds of cool stuff. We can also be found on your favorite podcast apps, our hosts, Spreaker.com or Brewcrime.com, as well as at Brewcrime on Twitter, at Brewcrime on Facebook, at Facebook.com slash groups slash Brewcrime. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Pacific Beer Chat. Here is a promo from one of the podcasts on the Michigan Sports and Entertainment Network. Hi, this is Brad. And this is Katie. And we're the hosts of Decomposition Decomposition Podcast. Podcast. I think considering the material we're working with, that language was neither shocking nor inappropriate. It's upsetting and delightful. Much like (laughs) this song. Uh, No, this is just rhyming nonsense. Yeah. Here to hyperanalyze all your favorite terrible songs. From Billy Joel to Taylor Swift. And Pitbull to Kiss. We break down what makes these songs so, so good. While they're so, so bad. This is a postmodern commentary on human existence. Mm. Billy Shakespeare did write a whole bunch bunch of sonnets. 154 to be exact. I am not suggesting that this is a good or artistic song in any way. It's not good, but but it's it's great. great. (laughs) You can find us at decompositionpodcast.simplecast.fm Or subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. Check out our new episodes every Monday, and remember... They're not guilty pleasures. If you don't feel guilty. Now here is a promo from a fellow true crime or spooky podcast that we really enjoy. Hope you'll take a listen. Hi, I'm Ben, the host of Dark Histories Podcast. Every other week I turn my eye towards the fringe and unsolved aspects of our history. In each episode I dig deep to bring you tales from large cultural events to smaller localised legends. From Victorian poisonings to cults and from the unknown to the simply unexplainable. You can find us on Apple Podcasts and all other platforms or head directly to darkhistories.com. I hope you'll come join me soon to delve into the underbelly of the strange. (laughs) My nose is so clogged, I can't. I'll take your word for it. You're not, that was my throat growling. Did everyone hear Okay, I think we both, I was like, is that me too? Because I burped too. <clears throat> Sounded hungry over there. No, just a weird <laughs> little throat graph. All right, well, <coughs> first let's cough. <clears throat> yes, right. <coughs> I don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can actually finish mine. Oh, it's a surprise. I will definitely finish mine. Cool. It's making me very burpy, though. Yeah. I was really trying to hold back. That's when you said it was your throat thing. I'm like, I'm pretty sure we gurgled at the same time. <laughs> okay. I think so. I think it's happening. <laughs> like, I feel it in my nose. Is that even an option? Is this thing of a penis? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> right. Can we put it away? I'm too distracted here. <laughs> well, we, maybe can't... we could just explain what we're talking okay. about. Nah, we'll just... Quickly. No. Oh, hey, it's cute. <laughs> okay. Oh, we'll yeah, be in the bloopers. Yeah, we can be in the bloopers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, talk about what we're talking about. <laughs> <clears throat> so today on our podcast, we're going to be discussing uh, Valentine's Day cards. So this is a cute little card, double fold, very firm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that is detailed. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> so it's a card that Mark got. Mark. <laughs> that yeah. other guy, yeah. Mike got, and it says, hearts are kind of butts, right? Boards? Birds? Butts? butts. Kinda, kinda and butts. it says inside, you are really cool. Happy Valentine's Day from Podcast Mom. And then there's a signature, another signature, and then it says Fancy Tuna. Yeah, uh, it's Fancy Tuna, it's Engineer from, Bob, oh, and from, Podcast Mom. It's from, <laughs> it's from uh, Booze, Booze and Brews and Podcast. Oh, okay. If you, leave him, if you leave him a review on iTunes and then send your address, they send you a card or something. It's yeah. amazing because it's on, cute. Yeah. On the back of this uh, card, it says like Valentine A, eh? and then there's this like adorable, cute little owl that's been defaced with a penis. <laughs> Um, not a penis on its face no it's, no, it's, a, pe- it's penis. a penis I where a penis i think should be on an owl mind you i've known zero <laughs> I don't about think they look like owl that on genitalia owl. No, probably not i don't think that ball sacks is big <laughs> uh this yeah anyways cool so let's talk about eating people uh, <laughs> segue that was the smoothest segue ever thank you here we go bird dicks <laughs> On to the next day. It's kind of like the founder of Segway that ended up driving off a cliff with a Segway and died. No. <laughs> yes. 
No. It's like the guy from Match.com whose wife left him for someone she met on Match.com. No! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's horrible. That's life. Mm. But did he get paid for that match? I think that twelve ninety nine a month yeah. really She probably helps. got a free account. Yeah. <laughs> the testing phase finds true love. Oh my god. Anyways. <laughs> okay, wow, cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> Dimitri is reportedly suffering from tuberculosis. Nope. Tuberculosis. Blah blah blah. Dimitri is reportedly suffering from tuberculosis, which is known to be linked to mental issues such as major depression, anxiety, and psychosis. <laughs> he says <Issues>. major depression. <laughs> Major depression. See, it was issues that I thought I said funny. We've been watching a lot of British TV, and they say issues instead of issues. And I think I kind of you mixed the two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I'm done. Okay. Should probably I do that not. sentence again? No. Yeah, probably. Okay. <laughs> yep. I'll, I'll do it again, and you can decide. I'll save both. <laughs> One goes to the end. Puppet hands. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. I can see you, Nina. <laughs> I'm trying. I don't know. I feel like not to laugh when I can tell. Just, just I wish we it. had a video of uh, this. Okay. Elena died on the spot. He went on. No, there. that wasn't a good pause. It's karma. You <laughs> fucked that off because you're going to leave me. I only saw stills from the video. But <laughs> from the video. <laughs> it's like from Bollywood. The video. <laughs> I come. I keep combining the last word of a sentence and the first word of the next sentence. I've never done that all the time. Yeah, me neither. Okay, in the mouth there is a half. Uh, no, in that's not in the mouth. Uh, complains that her cellmates won't stop taunting her about the cannibalism. Uh, no, about the cannibalism. It's all M's in that word. The wax dick. Oh, <laughs> ouch! Wax dick, huh? Uh, anyways, <laughs> he was an American serial. Serial. <clears throat> Over the course of balls, balls. Um, after um, he was a receiver. After Nina finishes that sentence, <laughs> <laughs> so. Obviously, going back to bom- bomber, <laughs> bomber. He was a bomber of a person. Um, that word I'm looking for. Do you count? If I'm eating people, it's for good reason. Like absorbing. What is more foul? Balls. <laughs> Sorry. What is more foul than balls? I agree. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was. It was going to make a serious point, and then I shut the bed. Um, then, if we look into the paraphilic cannibalism. Is used to describe a person who gains sexual pressure. Pressure. <laughs> the pressure. The pressure. I'm drunk. Okay. He was fetish of dead bodies and he kept dog balls. <laughs> he kept balls. He kept balls. He, he maybe kept balls. Um, no, he did. He jars. did. Yes. Well, he, I don't know if he kept the balls. He kept the, the, the genitals penis for sure. I don't know anything about that. Remember earlier, back in your story, I said, like, Downstairs. eat a dick? He, my guy literally ate dicks. Mm. Um, okay. Sorry. As Dahmer was considered unable to build any kind of relationship. Relationship. A third doctor, Dr. Park Diets, described Dahmer as premeditating with attention. (laughs) (laughs) Mine sounded a little cuter than that. I agree. Thank you. I agree too. <laughs> he had no interest in his age. Well, no, he had not interest. It's a good sentence, Nina. Um, he, I know. As I was reading that, you guys were taking selfies with your beer, and I was just like, "So, well, cultural I've, sensitivity. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have." Any. I had a joke to make, but then I was no. like, "Let's no. hear it." No, let's hear it. No, no. Just, no. <laughs> okay. Pause. Continue. I hate it when you say that. I mean, I know it's accurate, but it sounds disgusting. <laughs> the white head? Yeah. yeah. Like a pimple. Kind of 
<laughs> Stop. <laughs> She's making faces. I was waiting for him to almost start, and then I was going to make a fart noise, but you ruined it. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, this is my good side, so I had to cover the bad side and get the little face. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my God. Can I show you something? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> no, I'm going to show it to you anyway. Oh, mm-hmm. fuck. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's just a me. <laughs> read what it says. <laughs> mm. I didn't actually read it. Mm. Guess who's feeling extra emotionally unstable today? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Cool. It's never you, right? Yeah. Do you guys ever see those um, reenacted childhood photos? <clears throat> yes. I fucking love those. Whoa. They're hilarious. Excuse me. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's see if I can butcher this at all. <laughs> they had a big That's party. You, Nina. You're the unmarried one. That's true. Don't marry a singleton. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's in the name. He's single. Meant to say that mm-hmm. way. Yes. I'm not picky <laughs> these days. <laughs> I'm pretty single. So, you know, call me. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Hey! 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 Yeah. <laughs> and I can reach that. Six oh four. No. Five five five. Yeah. One 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 one. Is it called what? PCPs or PCP? PCP. Mm-hmm. Angel Dust. Mm-hmm. What? He what? said PCPs. 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 They've been That's not a thing. PCPs. That's hmm? not a thing. <laughs> What did I say? What? They're smoking PCPs. I'm like, that's not how that works. It's not like a joint. No, they you smoke PCPs. Okay, P- that's what she was just. You asking. smoke PCP. Yes, angel dust. You smoke angel dust. <laughs> I don't think you get it. No, <laughs> there's no S at the end. It's just they were they were smoking PCP. Oh, okay. not PCPs. Okay. Sounds kind of cute. P- oh, PCPs. Okay. PCPs. So I'll start that sentence again. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you all. <laughs> PCP, see you later. <laughs> PCP, see you later. PCP, see you all later. <laughs> Big lurch coming in. Yes. And then she'd kill that person. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> That's what I would do. 